Welcome back to the show. Now we're getting to our Gone Girl review and start the overview. This is 2014 psychological thriller film directed by David Fincher and written by Gillian Finn. It stars Ben Affleck, Rosamund Pike, Neil Patrick Harris, and Tyler Perry. This film was about Nick Dunn, who became the prime suspect in the sudden disappearance of his wife, Amy, in Missouri. At a budget of $61 million and brought in $369.3 million to the box office. At an 87% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And uh, this movie really does highlight kind of, you know, the extent people are willing to go to escape, you know, um, frustrating life situations. This is a... Uh, uh, a very thrilling type of crime, crime movie where David Fincher is kind of the king of twist and turn types of crime crime movies, ones mm-hmm. that have an ending that you're not expecting, um, a plot that that kind of has so many so many different narratives and so many different variations that um, it really is a puzzle piece throughout the entire movie. Um, what are your initial thoughts? You know, looking back on it, um, and I'm gonna be honest, this was my first time watching this movie this was my first time ever watching watching this <laughs> this is my first time i had really? seen i had seen clips of it, but i never never watched it fully and, and man what what a what what a what a, a an experience it, it was to just, just see the twists and turns of it uh but so you kind of like what were your initial thoughts um of the movie interesting 2014 yeah uh it's your first time watching it that's crazy 10 years later <laughs> we'll, uh, see who, we'll see what's here a decade from now <laughs> <laughs> the proof is in the pudding but no when I first watched this man I was like and I said this a couple of podcasts ago I think this was one of Ben Affleck's best films where he showed his versatility Yeah, and it was able to bring this character to life and bro it was such a crazy I'm like bro she's going through all of this and it had me glued to the seat I was so engaged into it and I was, I was at the end of the movie. I was so like, so like perturbed after like, bro. And he, he is no escape from it. No escape. Couldn't escape it when he, you know, they thought she was dead or gone and they can't escape it when she's back. And now she's so-called pregnant. And I'm like, bro, this is craziness. But I thought, yeah, this is great writing. Um, I thought it was shot really well. I thought the characters were, were great. I think the character development was great in this film. And again, I think David Fitcher, is, we got to put some respect on his name. I think he's he's a prominent director. And man, I, I really love this. I really love this film. This was this was a good film for me, for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and the writing in it, like, it was so sharp. It may have been some of the best writing David Fincher has ever done in his career. Um. To you, like when you when you see an, a director who ha- who has strong writing within his films, and especially this one, um, what does that kind of tell you the most about the output the director is willing to to um, to put in, and also um, the direction he's he's committed to? Yeah, uh, when with this type of film, with type of thrillers, and in so many moving parts, the dialogue um, has to be really good, and the monologue, uh, the dialogue has to be really good, and I think. I think he, you could tell he took his time and I don't know if he got assistance with this, but I, you could definitely take it. You definitely see he took his time and made sure every character uh, was developed and moved a certain way to bring the storyline to, together. And when, when you do that, you can see the translation from just a script that you've worked on for so many years and right. translate it to the film because it's a lot of great scripts out there, but it's so difficult to translate that, to shoot it, to see it how you visualize as you wrote it. Mm-hmm. And some some people during shooting will rip a script apart and have to squat from yeah, start from scratch start in a way. Yeah, start over. But I don't think he had to do that. I think it was so so well written. That when it translated and was time to shoot, that it it just effortless, effortlessly did it, and I think he got a great cast to bring these characters out. And I don't know who he had in running before Ben Affleck, or it, was it Ben Affleck the whole time? I'm sure it wasn't Ben Affleck mm-hmm. because we. It doesn't we see, seem like it doesn't seem like he would be the first pick for a film no. like this, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but I mean, you can tell that he had that range. He had that opportunity to show it. Because Town, I think Towns came out before this. Um, and most of the films he was, Ben Affleck has been in has not been like a thriller or this type of magnitude. And he really had to act his butt off and yeah. to, to prove to a lot of people that he deserved this role. And I think he did. But outside of having a great script, having a great director to bring it to life and him, him writing it and picking the perfect cast to do so, everything has to come together and has to be 
at a, a level 11 field. One thing can outweigh the other. And I think if this did, if we didn't have the actors to bring this character characters out, I don't think the movie has been as good as it was. Or if it was shot poorly, which I don't think it was, then yeah. you, you can't get the full ensemble of what it takes to show the different characters and different angles and use the, the scenery and all these things. But I know I'm talking and rambling, but this is what it takes to make a good film. It has yeah. to start with the All script. those ingredients. Yeah, all those, all those ingredients. ingredients. So I think, you know, and David Fisher did a great job with the script. And I know it took, it had to take like two, three years to kind of like scope this out and kind of maneuver it and mold it and, you know, prune it a little bit to get it to this. Cause I don't have, I don't, I can't nitpick this movie. Mm-hmm. Even the outcome. It's, it's so like, hard. Yeah, I can't nitpick it, and I want to. It's shot well. Like the outcome is exactly what I thought it should have been. Like he still can't escape. He loves somebody else. She, she just faked her own death. Now I gotta still deal with this woman, mm-hmm. and now she's pregnant. Yo, it was su- it's such a great movie. Such a great movie. There, there's so little. Like, like you said, there's so little to nitpick because it has so much filled in it that makes it a complete film and and one that like you said at the end you're just like this is this is how this is the situation he's in like forever <laughs> this is right. the situation he's he's really stuck in and and he, and he has to any and, and he has to um uh be okay with it and just you know come to terms with it uh getting to our first topic from one to four stars what would you give it um i would definitely give this one for um i think the the, the writing as we said is so high level and it and it really shrinks together along um such a complex plot and narrative that that we rarely see in films be able to 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 like land successfully in terms of just like people wanting to view it and be like oh man this is this is one of david fincher's best films and a masterpiece um to you from one of four stars what would you give it definitely four stars um just i think the biggest thing for me was the character development and if you listen to our podcast lifting full scope we do about movies i think one of the biggest things with any cinema plays whatever theatrical whatever the character development has to be at a point where you have no future endeavors for this character you have no unanswered questions for this character i think every character in this movie got there got to a point where everything was answered even the detective uh detective ronda boney like at first she was skeptical and then she understood she got this it. Yeah. bitty is lying <laughs> like <laughs> Like there has to be like, cause you know, certain, um, certain, certain movies will have a detective like oblivious, oblivious, not aware of nothing, just straightforward. Like, okay, you're, I think you got something to do with it, but their development of just that character got to a point where, whoa, okay, let me step back. Yeah, this some ain't adding up here. So, and we're we're the detective too. So I love yeah. like, bro. Nah, there's something that added up. Cause soon as she talking about she was dead or gone, or I was like, nah, that bitty, that bitty, she 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 tripping. <laughs> some something going on, bro. <laughs> talking about she escaped, escaped from what? Escaped from what? Yeah, what are you talking about? You escaped. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the biggest thing for me. And then I mean the writing, but that goes into the goes into the writing. Yeah, four stars. Rotten Tomatoes. 87%, man, that's is at least a 90, 91 for sure. Netflix executives. Ooh. <laughs> Netflix executives. No. 87 wasn't good enough. 87 wasn't good enough. Every week, every week when, when it is not up to the par of what it needs to be, I'm I'm gonna say I need the combo. I need the combo. Those summer shirts are coming on this coming soon. Coming soon, I promise. <laughs> I low key forgot about Netflix executives. <laughs> I need the combo. <laughs> <laughs> we need it ASAP, Rocky. ASAP. <laughs> ASAP, right? <laughs> um, and getting into our next topic, a uh, favorite character. Um, I-, I would go with Nick because it's very interesting how, you know, he's really in a whirlwind of emotions um, from the jump where the d- detective is, you know, he's trying to tell the story straightforward of what happened. He's caught off guard, obviously. And mm-hmm. then he has to go on, you know, a TV late night special and really be convincing and show, hey, you know, like I, I, I want my wife back home. Um, if you're listening to this, you know, like you know, yeah. let's start over. All these things, B- being convincing, getting the public back on his side, and the public goes against him. You know, once he, they find out he has a mistress, all of these different varying things that he ha- that he has to to um, navigate. 
Um, to you overall, who was your favorite character? That's a good point. Great point. Um, I have to get a detective Ronnie Boney, just because all the evidence shows he has something to do with it, and she's a woman. So in most of these cases, when women go missing, it's a male involved or their husband or something like that. So instead of going, and she did now, she was going base, she was going at uh, Nick Heavy, but then she quickly realized, not quickly, but eventually realized the full scope of it. Go ahead and see. Gonna, yeah. Come on now, the full scope of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, realized what, what was the truth, the hidden. And then she really couldn't say anything. So now, not only is Nick stuck, Detective yeah, Boney detective. is stuck. Yeah, for sure. Because she, she was like, oh, yeah, this don't add up. But I can't say anything. They're all, everybody's playing into it now. So I can't say nothing. So everybody end up stuck. Everybody. Look at that writer. Everybody's stuck. She's stuck with a baby she don't have. And she she wanted to leave. Instead of getting a divorce, she want to fake her own death or fake her kid. Now, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy, but now I like Detective. Uh, I like Detective Rhonda. Her character was, yeah. It wasn't the the the. It it goes back to what's the with um. Oh my goodness! With Terrence Howard, um, do that play X Men? Why am I? Oh, prisoners, 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 prisoners. We, we reviewed that detec- yeah, yeah, the detective. I, that character development is, is. I think it was similar. So, mm-hmm. um. Yeah, yeah, her character was pretty dope. Jake Gyllenhaal was born to play that role. Yes, Jake Gyllenhaal. I want to say Galifianakis, but I knew that wasn't right. So, <laughs> Start with a G. <laughs> Start with a G. Oh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. I remember you said that, uh, man, he looked like the the, type, the guy when you first saw him. He would just be a bartender at your local <laughs> sports bar. <laughs> hey, man, you think the Celtics are going to beat the OKC? <laughs> <laughs> You think the OKC uh, can do it <laughs> with the accent and all? Again. <laughs> with the accent and all, man. Um, and mm-hmm. now getting into most memorable scenes, I had I've killed it for you. Who else can say that? Nick's reaction when Amy comes back home. Amy oh, Dunn yeah. lays out her plan. Um, should I know my wife's blood type? Um, also, uh, the right guy mm-hmm. gone girl. Um, who are you? And then, um, and and I, and finally, the the last scene overall when when the conclusion of what Nick has to stay stay with the situation that he's in. Um, and just, you know, kind of the the realization of that being fully uh, met. Uh, to you overall, yeah. what were some of your memorable scenes? Every last one of those, man. Every last one of them. Especially the what I'm supposed to know my my wife's blood oh, type. Oh, yeah. Like, that makes me a suspect? Because I, I don't... Like, yeah, that scene was like, you just... And then when she came back, when he put... Like, he put her into the West Calm, and then she was unfazed. Oh, my goodness, yeah. It was like... You got it out your system? Okay. So this is what we're going to do. I'm glad you got it. I know you're upset. You could do that. I don't care. But you're stuck. You can't go anywhere. I need you to... Yeah, it was like, bro, she's psychotic. So psychotic. I mean, even after she killed the 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 the, the guy, uh, Neil Patrick Harris's character, she like, she almost cried. She almost cried and then she just went back to being serious. I was like, oh my goodness, bro. Like, it just... And she did him so dirty. Oh my goodness. He got it did. the worst out of everybody. He got it the worst out of everybody. Man. Desi oh Collins or Collins or Colleen's. Yeah, that's crazy, Desi. You died the worst death it out of Gave everybody. her a whole whole lake house, everything set up perfectly. Man, she was like, nah, you, you getting played. You getting you getting played, homie. <laughs> <laughs> and then she on TV faking like she got yeah she pregnant that's yeah that's wild and you that's can't so do anything, anything about it about right it. now Mm-mm-mm. what a what a what a fate to have what a fate to have that, that you have to be stuck, stuck in that man that that is that is wild um and and now getting into most memorable quotes I had whoever took her is bound to bring her back um this man of mine may kill me also, I'm so much happier now that I'm dead. A monkey who doesn't get the lethal injection. Come home, Amy. I dare you. And then finally, I've killed for you. Who else can say that? Um, and, and and also, what have we done to each other? What what will we do? Um, to, yeah. To, to you overall, what were some of your memorable quotes? <laughs> She's like, "What's the laptop for? Laptop it, like, bro. You're at. You get me so heated. What's the laptop for? It's laptoping. It's for laptoping. I thought that was so funny. His exchange with Amy." It's always just like, I'm frustrated with you. You got to go. But then he stuck again. Like, 
Like, of course, I'm with you. I was with you before even we were born. Margie Dune. Like, it was just, it was a lot of stuff. Um, but I think you 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 got the 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 good ones. Who get I kill for who can say that? Yo, what? <laughs> what? That's crazy line. That is a crazy line. He said, do you really want to be the couple that has a baby to save their marriage? And then come home, Amy, I dare you. Like, bro, it's just like mm-hmm. so many life. I don't remember the point. Like, it's just so many one liners that Nick has. And it just really like sums up like, bro, I'm so over this, bro. But again, I'm stuck and I'm in love with somebody else. Then I got crucified for it. That made me look like I'm not innocent. I had nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> yeah. I was happy she was gone. Yeah, I was like, good bro, she was gone. <laughs> yeah, and then I got, oh, now she's been kidnapped and all this stuff. I'm like, bro, what? And then you got to go on national TV to kind of like, yeah, Amy, come on. Amy, come gotta on. Got to do the, 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 the PR cleanup. The Absolutely. PR cleanup. <laughs> Absolutely, and she's just the biggest faker, man. So wild that 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 is just there. There's so many parts of this movie when you look back at it and are and are just like every scene, every outcome was all against Nick at the end. It just mm-hmm. all ended up being against him. Like mm-hmm. even even he didn't and 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 I mean he didn't know he was ended up with the psychotic person <laughs> who's a no. sociopath. Like he didn't know he was ended up with that type of person. I mean, he was, I mean, hey, careful you pursue. <laughs> right. And he's been crucified for being naturally falling out of love with the person he thought he would love forever. And yeah. then him, yeah, being crucified for falling in love with somebody else. Like that's the one of the normalest things yeah. in America yeah. or the world in general. Fall out of love <laughs> with somebody and fall in love with somebody else. Yeah. And he stuck, like, couldn't get a divorce. Before he get divorced, she fit. Yeah, it was so much stuff, man. Like, it's just like, bro. She played this role too good to where every time I see her, even in like funny roles or like, yeah, I'm like, mm, like bro, you play that role too mm, good. Yeah. Some in you. A little hey. too good. <laughs> What's in there? What's going on? You're a little psychotic, aren't you? <laughs> um, and, and, and now getting to kind of like, what did you like the most about the storyline? Um, t- to me, I, I, I really appreciated the fact that we were able to see um, Nick, especially kind of have that 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 sense of having a team like like Tyler Perry him, him being the lawyer and the, and the defense mechanism they also knew when to pivot and be like he like hey you don't have a this is not going to be a good look for you in terms of saying this or saying that but and and his twin sister as well like the 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 sister and the lawyer them being the two people to kind of like keep him grounded and not like go crazy and out of the loop i think Nick he he had to have a strong team around him surrounding him to not make a detrimental move which he could have mm-hmm. made he actually Absolutely. could have said something that, that could you know that, that could have really hurt him but he had a team within him that like really held him down and be like hey think through this don't say anything crazy and if you think you you are confident in what you're going to say then say it mm-hmm. um i thought that was that was a really good um element to it uh what particular element of the storyline did you kind of like the most no that was actually a good point i didn't even think about it that way yeah because they definitely was even if you're innocent you you gotta move a certain way so it doesn't Highlight that you, yeah, that's a good point, bro. Um, I like the 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 way, even her character, even as she was crazy, I love the way she was tenacious and she was when she, she was really focused. It doesn't matter if she's covering up a kill, it doesn't matter if she's coming up, like she was really focused and determined to get what she wanted. And especially in marriage, I don't know if that's realistic or not. Uh just uh, <laughs> marriages with women. I'll uh, probably get you know some comments about that. But no, I, I, I the 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 storyline from beginning to end. Instead of just like walking away, she just did it in a way she wanted to hurt him so bad that she took it to the the utmost. And then when she realized mm-hmm. that he flipped it, now she wants to come back and she escaped and all this stuff. Like she was so focused when it came to. Um, Doing the things she needs to, to to make sure she got the spotlight, she got the love, she got the effect, all the stuff she wanted. And I, I really, I really like that. I really like that in that character, as well as the storyline. Because then you have the different she didn't have a team. She didn't she right. did all this stuff by herself. She 
like, yo, like, what is crazy? He needed a whole support system. I just got these voices in my head. She had to have voices. Oh, had to. Had, had to. to. Without a doubt. <laughs> Without a doubt. About four or five. About four <laughs> or five would do. Who's keeping track? Who's keeping track? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I really like that, though. And again, that's for all the dogs. Uh, and again, <laughs> that's a testament to the writing. Um, but mm-hmm. that that's part of the storyline, the, the contrast of both characters. The, the, yeah, that was really dope. Definitely. Um, getting to our last topic, teams from now, do you still think this will be watchable and intriguing? Savon mentioned it, 2014, 2024. <laughs> we'll see who's we'll see we'll see who's here a decade from now. It is it has met that barometer in in, mm-hmm. in in every sense of the word. And I really think as though like, man, there are so many crime thriller movies. Like even people they will watch. And I was mentioning this with with uh with Destiny and Tyler earlier this week, but there were people that watch Law and Order reruns all day. Absolutely. Like I used to do that when I had a free free day of of, of, of class and I had like a, so some extra time and I would be doing my homework. I would watch Law and Order reruns because I mean it's just it's stuff like that that is just like you you are you are catching on to and just like stuck on every plot, mm-hmm. uh, every detail of the case, every you know um, hidden key that that you could say, oh man, this is a clue. This could be something, and I think this movie does that perfectly. Um, and David Fincher just strings along a, a, a story that is just so unbelievable in a sense. One mm-hmm. that you're like, man, it's just so hard to even fathom that that, that this would be done. But uh, to you, how do you think this will, will kind of carry on another decade from now? Such a, a great thriller and great great writing to where you're going to be so infatuated with every character, not just like. Even Tyler Perry's character was dope. Uh, Margo, the, the the twin sister, her character was really dope because she already knew who she was as a person, the wife, right. and she was like, "I know," but like it was just so many, so much character development, so so many moving parts that just worked really well together, and it it, it evoked so much emotion as the viewer because I got mad when he pushed her to the wall. Yes, thank you. Put her through the wall. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm against yeah, domestic I, I, violence. We're not that. Okay, we're not condoning that. But the emotion behind, especially after behind, that Diddy and, especially after that Diddy and Cassie. Oh my goodness. Well, stay tuned to the green yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. Stay, 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 uh, stay. We're gonna discuss that. <laughs> um, but man, yeah, just like the, the the emotions and just so many things, and then she played that character was so dope as the the antagonist because I do think Nick was the protagonist. And um, yeah, it's gonna be rewatched because it's it's West Collins. I think literally his best film outside of Towns and maybe Goodwill Hunting. But he was a supporting cast of Goodwill Hunting. It was it was mostly Matt Damon who was the star of that and who wrote most of it. <laughs> but I do think also, so good. I yeah, Towns is such so a good, good. movie. I want to I want to say that I, I'm well. This is another part. I'm, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it for the the green room. But I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna bring up the town again. I'm bring up the town. I've, I've heard something interesting okay. about the town. But yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, but nah, it's definitely yeah. This is one of his best films, one of his more um, films that he really had to show his versatility in his acting, his emotions, his anger. I mean, Towns again, he showed a lot of like <laughs> showed a lot of emotion, but it was just yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it really dope. It's gonna be watchable ten years from now. It eighty seven percent. A Netflix executives. Netflix executives. I need to have the combo. Yes, need to have the combo. We need to have the combo. Gotta have Pronto it. Eleganos. 87%. Pronto. This is this yes. is this is uh 92. This is 92 percent. This is 92 percent. Absolutely. That, that'll be my Absolutely. rating. Bro. I don't know what you would have, but I would have no nah, that's spot on, brother. 92 percent. Um, nine out of ten for sure. Come on. This is this film checks a lot of boxes. A lot of what, answer questions. What, what wasn't th- how was this not an A movie to y'all? Like what what, what was it? <laughs> was it what, how it what ended? Did it not do? Or <laughs> I thought I ended uh, perfectly. Wasn't satisfied with the end. <laughs> like the end, it was really great. Knocked it, knocked it down three points from a 90. <laughs> right. Like just, oh, let's give it an 87. 87 is like such a, a weird number to land on. Like 87. You 3% per percent from the, just give that 3%. Oh, like it was just crazy. Get them the 90. But anywho, Rod Tomatoes, a bunch of losers anyways. You heard it from Savon's corner. Stamped. <laughs> Stamped. Stamped. I want you to say Stamped. something. Stamped. Say something. Say something. Say something.
<laughs> there you go, Wellington. Say something cool. Okay, Wellington with the voice. Say something cool. <laughs> Me and Tyler always always joke about the not like us cadence that that Kendrick. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, such a West Coast cadence. <laughs> such a West Coast cadence. That's such a West Coast song, bro. Well, that wraps it up for today. I'm your host, Wonder Burns. I'm a counterpart, Savon Morris. This has been Full Scope. See you later.